You just heard two readings from the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch are the first five books of the Bible. The translation of Pentateuch can mean five books or five containers or even a five-volume book. Those five are also referred to as the Torah or the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These five books span thousands of years, all the way from the history of creation to the death of Moses. See, in the beginning, God created the world and the humanity in his image. But through disobedience, sin entered, separating God's people from him and highlighting the need for a savior. And despite humanity's fall, God promised redemption. Redemption through the seed of a woman, which would be Jesus Christ. As God's chosen people grew in number, they became enslaved in Egypt. And God raised up for, from them Moses to deliver them, who became an image of Jesus as the ultimate deliverer of sin. While in Egypt, God established the Passover. We just heard that, that scripture, that, that lamb, that lamb's blood that saved them from that angel of death that passed through Egypt. That same lamb's blood would be the same, would be the blood of Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, who would sacrifice and forgive all of our sin forever. So, but despite receiving God's guidance, Israel repeatedly failed to trust and obey, just like we do today, underscoring humanity's need for an ultimate faithful redeemer, Jesus Christ. In their wanderings, God's faithfulness remained. He never left their side, continually pointing them through prophecy, through these little breadcrumbs. A Savior is coming. Hope is with you. God reiterated his covenant or a promise and these laws that would keep them safe from the world that would attack them and draw them away from God. These laws we learn about in these first five books were a safeguard to keep them close to Yahweh and the hope of a Savior and a better covenant that Jesus would bring. Through all these narratives, the first five books of the Bible reveal humanity's desperate need for redemption. And God's unfolding, it sets up God's unfolding plan to send Jesus the hope of all nations, the hope of a Savior who would restore forever the broken relationship between us and God which we have today through Jesus. Amen. We sing.
next readings come from the history books of, and poetry books. First reading is 2 Samuel chapter 7. In these verses, God promised David that even though his line of descendants might sin, God would never remove his love and through David would come an eternal kingdom. We know that was fulfilled in Jesus. And now the reading. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. When he commits inequity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. But by my steadfast love will not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be, ma shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Our second reading is from Ezra chapter 3, starting in verse 10. God's people worshiped as the foundation of the temple was being laid, and Jesus is later referred to as the cornerstone. Now the reading. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments came forward with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asphis, and with cymbals to praise the Lord, according to the direction of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Our third reading comes from the book of Job, chapter 19, verse 25. Job's declaration of his Redeemer living forever and standing upon the earth is a prophetic picture of Jesus doing exactly that. Now the verse, for I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. Our next readings come from the Major Prophets. 
Isaiah 53, verses 5 and 6, Joel 2, 28 to 32, and Malachi 3, verse 1. From Isaiah 53, 5 and 6, Isaiah's prophecy of the suffering servant is a clear prediction of Jesus' sacrificial death for us. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. From Joel 2, verses 28 through 32. This is the prophetic promise of the Holy Spirit to come on Pentecost, whom Jesus sent to us after he ascended into heaven. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. And from Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, this verse predicts the coming of two messengers. The first messenger is John the Baptist, who prepares the way for the Lord. The second messenger is Jesus, who is often referred to as the Lord and the messenger of the covenant. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. We just saw from the books of poetry and the books of wisdom, through the prophets, all the way through the Old Testament, hundreds and hundreds of years of history of God's people seeking God and pulling away from Him, coming back to the Lord and being restored in the temple, being sent to Babylon into exile and then returning and rebuilding the temple. To the prophets saying, a Savior is coming. A Savior is coming. A hope is coming. Do not, do not forget. Do not let go of this hope. I will redeem my people. Because throughout all that Old Testament, God continues to redeem that, that covenant, that promise that he said to Abraham, you are my people, I will be with you always, and you will be a blessing to the world. Now, there are plenty of natural consequences throughout this. As they sinned, as they fall away, and there's disobedience. But the thing is that when we look back on the Old Testament, God is not this God of wrath out to get his people all the time. God is a good father that says, yeah, you messed up, but I love you. Come home. I'll redeem you. I have a plan. Restoration is to come. He sent judges. He sent kings. He sent prophets to continually to remind the people, don't you see people in your own life today who are like judges and prophets and kings who go to you and say, hey, remember who God is. Remember what he's done in your life. Come home. He's still, he's still doing it, friends. These are just stories to remind us that he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And some of them didn't listen. Some of us don't listen. <laughs> but he's good. So we can look back on all of this and know that Jesus, the hope of his son, who was there since the beginning of creation, all of this, his hope and his restoration has been planned. So we often ask God to reveal himself. We often ask him, make yourself known, because we don't always see him moving in the midst of our sin and brokenness. Sometimes we just see the ashes and the hurt and the pain of humanity and the brokenness that Satan causes. Sometimes we get focused on that. But as 
we look through the Old Testament. And please, I encourage you to get one of those booklets, download it. It was in your email also, the, a digital file. Put it in your Bible. Study these words. See that God has been working the whole time throughout the whole Old, Te Old Testament. This hope of Jesus has been woven through this story. And as we look back on our lives, just as we look back on the Old Testament, we see him. He's never left us. He's always been with us. And he always will be. He loves you. He'll never leave you. Amen?